approximate nearest neighbors in limited space. Uh, yeah. uh, is it working? Did I unmute it? Is it okay now? Okay, thanks. Okay, th uh, thank you. So, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about approximate nearest neighbors in limited space, and this is joint work with Piotr Indyk. So, um, the question we ask is, what is the space complexity of the approximate nearest neighbor problem uh, in Euclidean space? So, let me define the problem. Uh, in the first stage, we get a data set of endpoints in D dimensions, and our goal is to produce a small size representation of the data, which we call the sketch. So we are compressing the data set. And in the second stage, uh, we get a new query point that we didn't know while we were sketching. And the goal is to report an approximate nearest neighbor for that point from the sketch, uh, which is a point that doesn't have to be the closest data point to Y, because we allow approximation. But it needs to be almost as close as the closest point. This is the approximate nearest neighbor problem. And uh, in this talk, we are going to focus on minimizing the size of the sketch or the memory that we need to use to store the compressed data, or in other words, to get optimal compression. Okay, so this is the problem. Why do we care about it? So first, um, nearest neighbors are fundamental to machine learning. Uh, the, for example, in the last SNPs, there was a whole workshop on this, so I guess it should be clear. Uh, why do we care about compression? Uh, first, it is useful. So, uh, for example, if the representation of the data is more efficient, then hopefully linear scan is going to be faster, and pretty much every nearest neighbor algorithm uses linear scan, at least on subsets of the data, like LS edge buckets. And you can also think further. So uh, in a recent paper from Facebook Research, they took a data set of billions of images, and they compressed it, and then they could fit it on a GPU. And then they could run nearest neighbor queries by exhaustive search very quickly on this huge scale. And uh, the fact is that there is a huge amount of work in the empirical communities exactly on this problem, and it's a whole field of research. So all these servers and references and, and tutorials, this is what they do. They take a data set, and they show that they can compress it and still get good accuracy for nearest neighbor searches on the compressed data. So apparently it works for them in practice, and the question is, what can we say about it from a theoretical point of view? Okay, so um, again, we have uh, endpoints in the dimensions. We also need a parameter for the numerical range of values. So let's say that the coordinates are represented by log five bits, so we can visualize the data set as a matrix. And uh, the first line of attack would be dimension reduction. So a very famous theorem uh, due to Johnson and Intertrauss tells us that we can reduce the dimension from whatever it was uh, to uh, only log n, something like log n, and approximately preserve all the distances, and in particular the nearest neighbors, uh, which means that we can replace the data matrix with a skinnier data matrix that has a slightly different numerical range. Uh, in terms of compression, it simply means that instead of storing d numbers per point, you only store something like log n numbers. And this is already summed out on compression, and the question is, uh, is it optimal or can we do better? So we actually know that the johnson linder schross bound is tight. Uh, this is a recent result, but even before that, we knew it was essentially tight, up to log 1 over epsilon. Uh, but this tightness is for dimension reduction, uh, which means that you cannot make your data matrix any skinnier. But maybe you can do something else, use a different data structure and get better space bounds. And this is what you're going to do. Okay, so let me go over our results in the context of previous results. Um, for just to simplify the bounds, let's assume that machine words take log n bits to store and that epsilon is a small constant. This is a typical setting that's going to give the highlights of the bounds. Um, so again, if we don't compress anything, we need d numbers per point. If we use dimension reduction, then log n numbers or log squared n bits. This is what we had so far. Uh, there is um, a well-known paper by Kushilevitz, Ostovsky, and Rabani on approximate nearest neighbor search, where they show that if you only care about a limited scale of distances that you can maybe describe with log r bits instead of log n bits, then you can scale your sketch size appropriately. Uh, so this is a refinement of johnson linden schrauss It doesn't uh, improve it in general. And the other related work uh, is our own from SODA17, where we showed that you can, so you can use only log n bits per point, which is also optimal, but this only lets you estimate distances between the data points. So you need to know all the points in advance while you're computing the sketch. You cannot handle uh, incoming queries. And this is what we fix in this work. So we get a sketch that uses log n bits per point and can handle approximate nearest neighbor queries as defined earlier. And this is the first improvement uh, for this problem in the space bound over uh, johnson linder Strauss. So uh, this is one result. Let me mention another one. Uh, you might have noticed that all of these prior results can tell you the distances from the query point to each data point, approximately. 
uh, our result can only tell you the identity of a near neighbor and not the distance to the neighbor. And then the question is, can we improve it or is this necessary? So there is a known limitation uh, from SODA 13 where it was shown that locked cred n bits is actually necessary for distance estimation, which means the johnson linda strauss is tight for this problem uh, also in terms of space, not just in terms of dimension. Uh, however, they showed it under the assumption that you need to answer n query points and not just one. And indeed, all of these prior works, they can handle n query points as well as one, simply because the dependence on the error is such that you can scale it and take union bound. So it doesn't matter. Uh, the upshot is that johnston linda Strauss is tight in terms of space for distance estimation if the data set and the query set are about of the same size. But it leaves open the possibility that you could do much better if the query set is much smaller. Uh, which I think is a reasonable uh, setting in practice. And also, it's just interesting to ask what happens for a single query point. And indeed, we show that you can improve this, uh, and you can interpolate between our work that had log n bits without queries and johnson linda Strauss that has log squared n bits with n queries. And if you have n data points and q query points, and you need to estimate all the cross distances, you only need to store log n times log q uh, bits per point, And this is also optimal. OK, so these are the results. And one less remark about the results. Uh, so, as I said, we sort of fixed our own previous work that had log n bits per point and we had a nearest neighbor query support. Uh, but both of these algorithms are not practical. So, th the proofs are algorithmic. They give you a, an efficient algorithm, but as you know, it's not an algorithm that you would ever, ever want to implement, which is typically <laughs> the case with theory results, as we all know. So, uh, we partially fixed it uh, in the last NIPs. We had a joint work with Ilya Rasenstein, where we gave a variant of the same algorithm that uses slightly more bits. So it's log n times log log n, which is still uh, much better than johnson linda Strauss. Uh, but it was also practical to implement, and it actually compared well empirically to state-of-the-art algorithms from the empirical literature. Uh, but it also didn't have near, uh, query support, and we fixed it here with the same techniques, and we got a sketch that has provable sidebound, provable query support, and is uh, practical to implement. OK, uh, so this is it about the results. Uh, and in the remaining time, I will tell you briefly about the techniques. Uh, so let's start with what prior work was doing and where it was failing. So it is based on hierarchical clustering of the metric space, uh, which simply means that you take all your points into one big cluster, and then you refine it, and then you refine it more, until each point is its own cluster. What this gives you is a sequence of gradually refining clusterings of your metric space in different scales of distances. Uh, and this is, not, uh, this is not compressing anything yet. This is just a representation of the input. Uh, and the key observation is that you can think of the edges of the tree as bits in the binary expansion of your metric space. And once you have this intuition, the three edges are precision bits, then uh, compression comes naturally, because you do the natural thing of getting rid of all except the most significant bits. So you just round off precision. Uh, or in this case, you round off least significant edges. The effect that this has on the metric space is that the clusters are globally preserved, so they shift by a little bit compared to each other. And then it's pretty intuitive to see why distances remain about the same between data points. But it doesn't work for query points, because if the query is very close to one of the clusters, then a variation in the position of the cluster that looked small compared to the other clusters can be very large compared to the query point and completely change the nearest neighbor. Uh, and to fix it, uh, we do what we call middle out compression, which means that you get rid of all except the most and the least significant bits. So you get rid of everything in the middle, because the least significant bits turn out to be pretty significant for query points. And the way this works is that, um, on one hand, uh, the sketch is only twice as big, because instead of MSBs, we give MSBs and LSBs. And on the other hand, um, if the point is very close to the cluster, then we know it, because the least significant bits store the local structure of each cluster. So we know what's around it, and we know if the point is there. If the point is very far, then uh, the global bits do the same job as they did earlier. And if the point is somewhere in the middle, then all I have time to say is that you guess the bits, and you hope for the best, and you prove that the best happens. So uh, I'm going to stop here, and thank you. Time for questions. The lower bound for Q carries is, is tight for distance estimation. For nearest neighbor, we only know that it's tight when Q equals N. So we have the same problem. Okay, okay let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>